So today I'm going to go through the critical control management module. Um, and what I'd like to do is, in fact, show you the simplicity of it um, and why you can actually use the tool pretty much straight away uh, to basically get going and and um, obtain all the benefits from implementing it, reducing the chances of very, very serious injuries and fatalities. So it's not, uh, there's often a lot of mistake around critical control management and it, and it can be very, very simple to basically make it a straightforward sort of process. So I'm going to just introduce the tool to begin with, and then I'm going to go through the graphical bow tie. Uh, I'm going to go through verifying critical controls um, and then showing you how you report on the fact that you've verified critical controls. And then also looking at how it integrates with other parts of the system. Now, you can use critical control management as a standalone module or with other modules within the Marsh um, system. And um, so it, 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 it can interface with, you know, pretty much any other system. So what I'm going to look at here is um, uh, I'm going to basically uh, show my... Um, uh, my screen, my screen, um, and on my screen, you should be able to see um, the list of unwanted events, basically. So when you're looking at CCM, what you're looking, what you're identifying is basically what are the unwanted events that could occur that could cause a fatality or serious or long-term injury, and. When we talk to the authority bodies like WorkSafe and those different organisations, one of the first things that they now come in and say is, what are your critical events? What are your unwanted events? What are the things that could cause fatalities? And there's generally not a large number of them. So when you look at risks within an organisation, you can, you know, you can go on forever. You could be having hundreds of risks that you identify. That isn't the process here. What you need to do is you need to identify just the ones that are high risk, the ones that will cause the major problems. So that's what's listed here. Some are under review, some have been assessed, and they're all got the, the green status at the moment, which means they're all going fine. I'm going to go into this particular one. So once you've identified your unwanted events, what you need to basically do in simple terms is you need to identify the preventative controls. So they're the things that will basically prevent the unwanted event occurring. Um, and you need to identify what they are and record some information about those. So the other thing you need to look at is also look at your mitigating controls. So they're the things that basically after the events occurred in the unfortunate situation that it does, how do you prevent the severe consequence of the fatality or the permanent disabling injury occurring? So you can liken that to, for example, uh, seat belts in, um, in 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 cars. That would be a mitigating event, and the unwanted event is the actual car crash itself. So I'm in a, uh, a a critical risk assessment at the moment. When I'm in edit mode, you'll see a series of things. Fairly simple. Uh, you've just defined the actual scenario. You've defined the associated hazard. Um, you risk rate it with a um, with your risk matrix, which is configured to what you have. And then basically, you've, as I mentioned, you've got the controls here. So if I open up a control, I can just simply click on it and it will actually open up the control document. Once I've opened up the control document, I can then go through and look at some details of the control document itself. So again, it can be relatively simple. And each of these uh, documents can have their own workflows. So you can have approval processes and review processes and all of those sorts of things. Um, you can have a control owner um, but again, you don't have to, you can keep it really simple um, and you can expand it later if you wish to. So, and each one will have a control, each control will have a control history. So in this particular case, there's a control history for this one of all the things that have actually happened um, and all the various different um, control failures, if you like, or where the, where the control has become effective are automatically stored in the control history. And I'll show you in a few moments time how that actually gets populated. Okay, so I'm gonna close down the, um, the, the control for the moment, and I'm going to now go back to the risk assessment. And 
when you want to look at it in the bow tie diagram, you just click on the bow tie button and then what you'll see is a diagrammatic representation of this particular um, uh, unwanted event. So we've got the unwanted event here, the hazard that can, that's basically causing it, the preventative controls that causes, the preventative controls, what uh, the mitigating controls and then the potential consequences. So this is a diagram, diagrammatic representation of what I was looking at before. And each of these things links back to the actual um, items that you saw in the previous screen. So if I click on this link here, what it will do is it'll actually open up that control. And then I'm looking at the same information that I was seeing before, which I can scroll down and look at the various different details for. Now, the other thing you can do from here is not only can you see the representation of what was in the list of unwanted events and controls that we saw before, you can also build these um, from scratch as well. So in this particular case, you can basically just type in the information into these screens. You can add your causes. So I'm going to call, I'm just going to say um, uh, no barriers. Okay, and that's basically added a cause into the system. And then I can just go through and add my controls. So um, you can, I'm just going to type in control here for the moment. And again, you can then add more controls as you, as you, as you wish to. Um, and basically you can keep on going. You can add your consequences, your mitigating controls and so forth. And then you can come back and actually fill out the details by just simply clicking on the link. It'll open up the control. You put in the details of the control um, and then basically you're away. Now, this doesn't have, you don't have to get it 100% right. You can basically start off with what are the causes, list them out, what are the controls, what are the consequences, what are, how do we prevent those consequences? And as you see new ones pop up or as you identify things, you can just simply add and build to it. So the way I look at it is it's not something that you, you don't have to be a perfectionist from day one, because if you are, you probably won't start the process for a very, very long time. So the words I hear from people is, um, we're not we don't we're not a mature we're not mature enough to do this but the reality is is you can start this straight away very very easily okay so you build your bow ties now what this is doing is it's then basically building if I if I go back to um, back to here that's now a draft one called drowning and it's building the structures inside there for you to basically complete the details and identify control owners and those sorts of things now some of the other things we look at today is, I'm just going to close that down for a moment. Some of the other things we're going to look at today is we're going to say, one of the things we have to do is we can put our controls in place. Um, identify controls. Um, but we need to verify the controls are actually words. That's one of the most important things. If you're not verifying the fact that you've got guarding in place and it's effective or whatever it might be that you're doing to... Um, either prevent or mitigate the unwanted event, then the process really isn't going to be effective. So one of the things that you can do with the system is with any of the modules that you've got within the system, you can actually integrate with the, um, with the unwanted events and the CCM module. So as an example here, I'm going to jump into the inspections um, uh, part of the system. So I'm in the inspections module, which you can see right here. I'm going to create a new inspection. Okay, so this is our verification process. We're doing inspection, and it's part of things we do every day. We're doing inspections. We're checking things. But most inspections um, that people do have to be checked and verified, and someone goes through it, and someone then goes and creates actions and whatever else. These are smart inspections. These do a lot more than that, and they do it automatically without the person needing to remember to do things or even knowing that they need to do things because the system automates those things in the background. So as I look through this inspection, and I'm not going to spend time filling out the details here, I'm just going to scroll through it and just answer at least one or two questions. So as I scroll through here, there are um, you can see there's pictures, there's questions, there's answers with colour coding and so forth. So as it happens, this has been configured and it's just a configuration process. It's very, very simple. It takes a few minutes to set up each one, so each one of these. In this particular case, this actually relates to a critical control um, being in place. 
and it's saying are tags applied. So I'm going to say there's not, and I'm going to put in some more details. And I'm going to say that um, tags are missing. Um, So I'll put some details in there. Now there can be other things you can put in there. If you're on your, when you're doing this um, exact thing using the mobile app, which can work online or offline, basically you can also take pictures at the same time, which would then go into the entire process. So this looks exactly the same on the mobile app, except there's a little bit more functionality with the ability to basically take pictures as you go. So these questions may or may not relate to, um, to critical controls or not. So you can decide which, what is a critical control verification. And um, basically it means that you don't have to have one inspection to just to check all your critical controls. You can, you can basically embed it into your existing inspection process. So there's nothing more for the average person doing their job that they have to do. All they have to do is just do what they do now and answer the questions and fill out the details. So when we click on the complete button, and again, there's a whole lot more questions here, which I'm not gonna fill out, but I'll, I'll click on the complete button. Click on yes. Now, what that's going to do is a whole series of things in the background. So one of the things that it's doing is it's basically updating the CCM module to show that we've actually um, uh, to, to indicate that we've actually had a critical control failure. So if I jump over to the CCM, that before I didn't point it out, but that before was green like all the other ones. It's actually now gone to control issues. So it's identified that we've got an uncontrolled event that has some control issues. So I can then go through, open that particular item, and I can say, okay, I wonder which one of those has a control issue. So when that opens, I can now see that that particular control has changed status and is red. So immediately I can see that we have an issue with the um, isolate and de-energize lockout, which was related to that uh, question that I answered. So I can then click on that and I can then see more detail about what's actually gone on. So if I go down to my control issues, what I'll see is a tag was not attached to a piece of equipment. So any, informa uh, any information that's stored in that inspection can actually get pushed through here. So, and the, no the comments were a tag was missing, stop work. Now, if I clicked on this link here, it would also take me to the actual inspection itself. And I would then um, basically um, be able to see further details of that inspection. Now, as I'm working in the background, um, my mail is actually beeping at me and there's uh, other um, items that are popping up. So there's, um, there's things like um, uh, emails that are being sent to my inbox to tell me that there's a critical control failure. And um, in fact, on my mobile, I've just received a push notification that's telling me that there's a critical control failure. So basically it's ringing the alarm bells. We've got something, a control has failed. Now, the other thing that we can do now is if we go back to um, the actual event, the, the actual bow tie itself. So I'm just gonna open up this bow tie again. Once that opens, one of the things I didn't mention before is we have some things here that says, okay, show me which ones are the critical controls. So it highlights those on the diagram. The other thing that we can see here is which are the ones that have control issues. So straight away, but just simply going into the bow tie, I can click on that button and I can say that's got a control issue. So if we've got one or more control bow tie. So in many cases, bow ties, when people have done them, they're just graphical. Um, you know, the, the, the drawings on a piece of paper that they get filed away and then they're, they're not really used again. So what this means is the bow, this bow tie is something that you use on an ongoing basis because you can review the bow tie, you can add to the bow tie. So you might identify some new controls. You might identify causes or mitigating controls and so forth. And you can also see what are the issues within the business where there are control issues um, and then identify whether you've got enough 
controls to prevent the causes from occurring. So let's um let's move on to um, the verifications themselves. And what I'll do is I'll jump back to here again for a moment. And what I'm going to look at here is um, looking at the critical control verifications. So this is something, as I mentioned before, is really important. Critical control verifications are basically the checks that you've done. So did it pass or did it fail? I verified whether there was tags in place and there wasn't. Um, so that was a failure. So when I go to that view there, what I'm looking at is all the passes and or fails and also all the passes as well. And that's a really good measure. It's a fantastic lead indicator because if you're not doing enough verifications, you're not gonna be picking up whether there's issues within the organization. So we've got customers that basically measure how well they're going by the number of verifications, not just the passes and fails, but the number of verifications they're doing in different parts of the business for different, uh, for different controls. So one organization that comes to mind has, I think, did 30,000 verifications in a single year. Um, and once you've got this information, so if I click on, say, that verification that I did a few moments ago, what you'll see, there's dates, which critical risk did it relate to, um, uh, what was the source, what was the um, verification date, who, was, who verified it even down to other information if you want to. And again, this is all configurable, very easy to do. You can relate it to things like equipment number or drill rigs or um, you know, whatever, it, whatever it is that's important to you to measure this against. So one of the things that you'll be able to do here is you can, because it's creating all these documents, it means that you've got a way of reporting this information to, um, on, an, on an ongoing basis. So if I jump to um, the dashboard, and this is our uh, standard dashboard built within the system, and you can create tabs, you can build your own widgets. Um, each page can have multiple lines here. So I've uh, jumped straight to the critical control verification um, tab on this dashboard. Now I can see where the fails have occurred. And if I want to, we've got three fails here. And management look at this um, for the organizations using the system. They look at this um, every single month um, and throughout the month. And they're looking at it to basically say, well, let's see what fails we've been having. But they don't only look at it for fails. They also look at it for, are we doing enough of these things? So I'm going to click on this one here. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to drill down into the, into the three fails that we've had for that piece of, um, piece of equipment. And then I can drill down further and go into the detail of the verification so I can get more information about the verification itself. So management don't need to go and drill down into all of the things that I was looking at on the left-hand side here. They can just simply look at the graphs, do the analysis on it, and then um, start asking questions um, about whether we're doing enough of these things. Um, why have we got, why aren't we getting any failures? Are people just doing tick and flick on the inspections? So they, it, it allows you to do a lot more analysis on what you're doing. Okay, so some of the other things that are happening in the background. So while we're doing that, if I just click on actions, and again, this is configurable. This is, you can configure this to whatever modules you've got. Um, and, and you might configure it to any of these modules on the left-hand side, or in this case, actions. So what I've got here is an action. An action was generated and it was highlighted with a high priority and it was assigned to a particular person. So when I click on that item there, what that's basically saying is um, we need to urgently investigate a, a tag that was missing on a particular piece of equipment. It's assigned to a person. They may receive a push notification on their phone um, or obviously an email um, within the system as well. And then they can obviously go and investigate and find out what's actually going on there. Now, it can also be integrated into other parts of the system as well. So as an example, if we're looking at, say, incident reporting, what I've done here is I've opened up an incident report. So someone's reported an incident um, of uncontrolled release of water causing a near drowning. Okay, so 
if we go through the list here, you can see there's a series of questions again, also very highly configurable. And one of the questions that we configured here was, did this inf incident involve or relate to a critical risk? So if I choose yes there, and I can go through and select the critical risk. So in this case, it would be drowning. Now, when I progress this in the workflow and continue the investigation, then that will ring more alarm bells because we've actually had an event that related to a critical risk occurring. And it will also go away and update the critical control management system and change statuses to make sure people are aware that maybe we don't have all the controls in place that we need. And then you can start saying, or maybe a control failed. So there can be more analysis on that. And that can also trigger things like a more thorough investigation. So you might need to do an ICAM investigation or um, some other sort of root cause analysis um, when this, these sorts of questions are basically answered. So just in summary um, of the different things that I've looked at today, basically what you're looking at here is a really, really simple tool. It's something that you can get started with and build bow ties that build those underlying structures. So you're basically adding information to boxes here and then going into the forms and just filling them out and using this as an ongoing continuous improvement process where you're continually reviewing the controls, continually um, identifying causes and consequences putting in verifications in place um, and adding more information as you need to, as opposed to saying, well, we can't quite get there yet. Uh, we, need, we need to identify all of them first. So very, very simple. Identify your unwanted events. Identify the things that are going to prevent them from happening. Identify the things that will mitigate them if they do happen. Build the bow tie and add to it over time. Okay. Uh, are there any questions, Sarah? Okay, let me unmute myself. Um, no, I'd like people to add questions to the Q&A panel if they have any. I have just shared a link in the chat there. Um, it's just to a web page. Um, we are having these webinars once a month because um, just to help people get informed. If you want to join another time, there'll be another one next month. Um, there is a, uh, this whole page actually goes through the process very um, simply. So there's a case study from one of our clients here. Um, further down, there's a very short video if you want to share that with other people that just covers the process. And as you go down, the, the elements are sort of um, summarized as well. At the bottom, there's a form. Um, if you want to fill that in, then we can get some pricing to you, or maybe you want to arrange a personal demonstration for another time with some colleagues as well. So questions, I can't see any at the moment, Adrian. So um, that means you did a really good job. <laughs> So yeah, uh, if anyone wants any more information, it's best to just contact us. You can um, also e email me anytime as well and I can help arrange a demo or get any other questions answered. So um, Steve, um, can you type your question in the Q&A panel if you have one? Thanks. All right. So um, we'll just give it a couple of seconds, Adrian. Um, I did um, sort of uh, myself, I know we get this question sometimes, but about in underground situations when um, there's issues with using iPads? Uh, yes, there's um, uh, devices can now be made very safe um, in, you know, environments, including where there's um, potentially explosive um, you know, uh, materials or in underground areas. So they can be, firstly, they can be ruggedized. Um, and we've got customers that, customers that are using them in these sorts of environments. So not only can they be ruggedized, they can also be made safe. Um, so they don't, you know, potentially cause explosions and those sorts of things. The other thing um, also to mention is that the mobile app um, can be used in those environments where you don't have internet at all. So what you can do there is you can be in an underground, let's say you've got no Wi-Fi or no, you know, no um, internet access. 
uh, you can still do those inspections, you can still do those verifications. And uh, when you get back to um, Internet Access and you, you open the app again, what it does is it automatically synchronizes and then the processes still trigger. So it can, it can be available in, in fairly remote locations um, with limited access to internet and in also obviously places where you wouldn't normally take tablets. All right, well, I think you just answered Steve's question, which was about using it uh, in the field to do inspections offline. Yes, both on the ground and underground. Um, so we don't have any uh, other questions at the moment. Um, as I said, please um, email us for any questions um, if you want to get an idea for pricing. So um, I think that's it, Adrian. Thank you. Um, oh, hang on. Calvin, of course, I should tell you this. How do we obtain a recording of this? A recording will come out um, either later today or early in the morning by email to everyone who registered. So you can, um, that'll be a YouTube video recording. Um, you can also listen to a podcast as well for that. All right, so um, yeah, all done. Thank you, Adrian. We'll see you, listen to you again in a month, hopefully. Fantastic, thank you, Sarah. Thanks everyone for attending. All right, thank you everyone, bye.